Hello everybody. So we're going to be talking about isentropic efficiency of steady flow devices, okay? So let me actually write that there. I'm just going to write isentropic efficiency. And basically this might sound like some complicated term. Honestly, it's not too bad. Um, basically, those same like turbines, compressors that we dealt with before, right? They sort of, remember I talked about like when we have reversible things, right? We want to see why how close we are to perfection, right? So these isentropic devices are sort of like perfect devices, okay? Um, now we know that isentropic means adiabatic and reversible, right? And reversible, right? So that being said, um, we're dealing with isentropic devices, right? So both, um, we're comparing these isentropic devices to our actual devices. So when we're dealing with these, both the the actual and the reversible system must be uh, adiabatic, okay? So um, basically, if we're dealing with adiabatic turbines, compressors, pumps, nozzles, diffusers, we're dealing with adiabatic devices, okay? Regardless of if we're talking about the actual or the isentropic. And this, you'll generally see this come out when we're dealing with like adiabatic efficiencies. And hopefully, they won't trick you by just doing something just off on a tangent somewhere, but just know that, okay? Um, now here's a little chart that I'm gonna draw for you, okay? Now when we're dealing with actual, they might say, hey, you have an actual, you might have a, a turbine that we're dealing with, blah, 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 and the isentropic efficiency is this, right? What you need to know is that um, we have this, right? So I'm gonna draw, let's say this is our actual device, And this is our isentropic device, okay? What we're gonna find is that the inlet conditions are identical. So if I have P1, T1, H1, H2, or what am I saying? Uh, V1, S1, those are all the same, okay? And I didn't write, so let's say this is reversible. And again, we're dealing with uh, adiabatic systems. So this reversible plus adiabatic just means it's isentropic, right? What we're gonna see here, okay, so what we're gonna find is that at the outlet, they have the same pressure, okay? P2 is the same for both of these devices. However, for this reversible device, S2 is equal to S1, okay? So our entropy did not change, and that's sort of what we get isentropic, right? Isentropic means there's no change in entropy, okay? And this also, note that P1 is not equal to P2, okay? Just P2 for both the actual and reversible devices are equal, and P1 for both the actual and the reversible devices are equal, okay? I've made this mistake in an exam, and it was so painful because I couldn't do the problem because I didn't realize that they had the same outlet pressures. For whatever reason, I thought they were different. But just keep that in mind, okay? P1 is not equal to P2, but P2 actual is the same as P2 reversible, and P1 actual is the same as P2, P1 reversible, okay? Now, I've probably said this before, but it's important to note that a work-producing device, the, 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 so if I have this, right, and I define this as isentropic work, And if I have WA, which I define as actual work, for a work producing device, WS is always gonna be greater than WA, okay? And that makes sense. To remember this, just think about, when we're trying to produce work, what we're trying to do is have a system so efficient that it produces the, the most amount of work. Work is our desired output, okay? So, WS is always greater than WA for a work producing device. For a work consuming device, it's the other way around. And this makes sense, okay? When we're dealing with a perfect system, right? We're gonna have, um, the way I think about it is that um, 
basically, the more work you put in, right, the more it costs you, right? You're putting energy into that system, you're putting work inside, the more it's costing you, right? A perfect system is gonna cost you less, meaning that you put in less work, right? So that's the way I remember it. Now, basically, we have these things called isentropic efficiencies, okay? And these will be given to you based on the certain devices that we're talking about, okay? For work producing devices, we're gonna find that isentropic efficiency is gonna be this. And this is sort of just an intro, okay? And the way I remember this is that, is that um, basically efficiency, efficiency is always gonna be less than one, right? So because that work actual is less than work isentropic, it's gonna be at the top, right? That work actual is gonna remain at the top. Now, if we have a work consuming device, our isentropic efficiency, that's sort of slanting there, sorry. Um, our isentropic efficiency is gonna be um, WS over WA. And that makes sense, right? Again, efficiency always has to be less than one. Here, this is less than this, right? So that's why we put it at the top. Um, that's all you need to know for now. Basically, we're gonna get into examples involving turbines, compressors, nozzles, diffusers, and we're gonna see how this plays out. This is sort of why I said entropy itself, the knowledge, isn't as important as the application because a lot of the time, they're gonna ask you, hey, what's this, boom, boom, boom. You might get five points here and there, but this might be one third of the exam points, okay? They might give you a problem where you have to apply all of this and put all of that into account. So let's keep learning thermal. Thank you.